Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the second edition, uh, session rather, of the Cine Lizio Citizen Journalism Program. I'm your host and Games Master, Duncan Masiwa. And if you are tuned in, congratulations for making it to the second week of the program. I've had so much fun uh, engaging with you guys uh, via WhatsApp. And I'm really happy to see that you've been uh, uh, helping each other, asking for advice, and also um, posing questions in the group. So for that, keep it up. But I am not flying solo. I am with the editor of Food from Zanzi, Dawn Numdu. Dawn, welcome. Thanks so much for having me with you this week, Duncan. It's great to be here and to be connecting with Team Sinelizwe again. Um, I know that there are a few front runners, so congratulations to those players, and I hope that everyone else will be catching up very soon. Right, so let's get straight into it. So, we kick off with what is news. I know that you've guys, you guys have been asking a lot uh, in the group, uh, when are we getting started with the work? I'm so excited. So I'm happy to see that you guys are quite eager. So let's kick off with what is news. So news is factual reporting uh, on an event that is meant to inform uh, and in people, and in this case, your, your community. Uh, and it is considered valuable information uh, that is significant and interesting. And two things about news, it has to be obje objective and it has to be concise and clear. Okay, next slide. Where do we source news from? So news can be sourced from press releases that uh, agri companies, uh, organizations rather send out. It can be sourced from follow-ups. It can be sourced from by reading, making sure that you're constantly reading uh, and engaging with, with, with new content uh, that's out there in the world. Um, it can be a source from your own sources, uh, writing your own story, coming with a, up with a new story idea. Um, it can be by delving deeper into um, perhaps articles or, or, or yeah, articles that are, that are already existing. And perhaps you pick up on something new. Um, so that's also a way to, 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 to um, uh, get access to new sources and new information as well. Um, then, of course, your context that you build up um, while as you are growing in the industry and then of course uh, specialization beats and this is what we call um, when you are responsible for uh, a certain uh, perhaps industry in agriculture um, I would say uh, disease animal diseases okay so if you are responsible for, for, for that industry or that part of the industry then um, you will of course then build up context um, in that part of the sector so that's also another way to, to, to source information and making sure that you stay ahead of what's going on in that specific in, um, part of the sector. Dawn? And so the thing that I want to share with you today is ways for you to be more aware of what's happening in your town. Um, and I'm sure there's a lot going on and COVID-19 is top of mind always for most people. And, but there's a lot more happening that you can find out and know about by talking to people. Um, so it's important for you from the very start to keep your ears and eyes on the ground and to find out what's happening in your community. Um, you can also do this by visiting the local government office um, and also attending community meetings and possibly also attending council meetings to find out what's happening in terms of financing, what's happening in terms of um, roads that are being built, what are some of the other plans and projects that the municipality, the local municipality is doing. Um, and in that way, you're also engaging in some of the projects and things happening within your town or community. You can also speak to local residents about the issues that they have and what they'd like to you to focus on and what are some of the burning issues that they want to talk about. Um, and so that's also a way for you to find out what's happening in your town or in your area. So the overall thing is for you to become an active citizen and to find out more about what's happening around you. And I'm sure that many of you are doing that already. So just take it up one notch um, and then you'll be good to know and to go in the next few weeks as well. 
Right. What makes a story newsworthy? Okay. A story is newsworthy if it is new, of course. Uh, if it is unusual, uh, if it's interesting, if it's significant, and if it's about people. So when writing uh, a new story, make sure that you tick all these boxes because you don't necessarily want to put out a story that's been um, done or covered by another publication three days ago, four days ago, and then it doesn't really make it in, um, newsworthy anymore. John? So I think earlier Duncan spoke about beats and your specialization. So just wanted to elaborate a bit more about that. Um, so finding your beat or what a beat is specifically um, is a particular topic or subject area that a reporter will cover. Um, I think Duncan made the example of animal diseases, but it can be a lot more broader. So perhaps you focused on a specific commodity within the agricultural industry, or perhaps you want to focus on sport, politics, education or health. Um, that's also some of the beats that you can choose from. Um, and covering a specific beat allows you to build your expertise on the specific topic. And it also makes you the best at the specific topic. So you can become really good at writing about, you know, the, the, the grain sector, where you can become really um, enlightened or um, in the know about what's happening within the cannabis industry. Um, or you know all about hydroponics and you write about that regularly. Um, so there's different sectors or what we now refer to as beats that you can write about within the agricultural sector, but more generally within journalism, you can also follow a specific beat that is of interest to you, whether it be sports, whether it be politics, whether it be education or whether it be health. Um, so I think it's important to find your beat early on and find out what makes you tick and stick to it for a while and maybe you want to explore other areas and other options and other sectors that you also want to write about. But find your beat and find out what makes you tick. Right, that brings us then to the end of session two of the Senior Leisure Citizen Journalism Program. Um, but And right after this, I will be dropping you some notes on tonight's session, um, just to give you some examples um, and really, really delving more into it. Uh, Dawn, thank you for, for, for joining us. Is there any last words from you, perhaps, for the candidates? I just want to say to everyone um, that it's very early on, um, so take it week by week. I know everyone's really enthusiastic, and thanks so much for everyone who engaging, who's been engaging on our various platforms. We appreciate all the love, and you're definitely part of the family now. Um, so I can't wait to read your stories and find out more about what's happening in your communities. Right from me, Duncan and Dawn Numdu. Um, have a great week and ciao for now. Until next week's session. Bye. Bye.